What's up, YouTube? Today, we're gonna to be talking about a bad premium finance design with Index Universal Life. Now, if you've ever seen or considered premium finance as it relates to Index Universal Life, you need to watch this video because there's a couple key concepts in here that you wanna make sure you avoid with your own policy. Hey guys, so it's Matthew Decker, Leverage Wealth Management. If you've been following the channel, you know that we specialize in index universal life insurance uh, for cash accumulation and tax-free income purposes. And with that, we do a lot of premium finance, uh, which is basically borrowing money from a bank to purchase life insurance policies. Now we've done a whole series on premium finance insurance. It's not for everyone. However, uh, for some people, it makes a ton of sense. And unfortunately, in the premium finance space, there's just a couple bad actors that really show things to clients that never have any likelihood of actually happening or coming true. Bad illustrations, uh, bad assumptions, and it results in people getting, to, getting into policies that they probably should never have gotten into in the first place. So I've got a sample here that we're gonna go through pretty quickly because there's just a few key things that are gonna kinda jump out at you uh, once you look at this premium finance design. And again, if you haven't seen our series on premium finance, you should watch that first. We'll link that in the description below. and We'll put a little call out card at the top of the video. Uh, but what we're gonna be showing here is basically some of the major issues as it relates to Index Universal Life and premium finance. So what we're looking at here is a pretty typical bank sheet that is provided by a premium finance vendor. And you know they're all gonna look relatively similar. They might have a, a couple different columns or they might use different verbiage, but the general concept is going to be the same in all of these different uh, premium finance outputs. You're gonna have an annual loan amount. You're going to have um, you know, your cash surrender value here, you're going to have the interest rate assumptions from the bank, you're gonna have your collateral column, and then there's probably going to be some kind of in income column, you know, or so something along those lines. So those are kind of the variables that we're looking at here. And when I look at this premium finance sheet, there's a couple things that jump out right away. And, you know, if you've done any research on premium finance, this is probably gonna stick out to you uh, right away as well. And the first thing is, there's no out-of-pocket cost associated with this premium finance policy. Uh, and so that would be column six, out-of-pocket cost. So the client is seeing this bank sheet and it's essentially being pitched or positioned as free insurance with no risk, right? There's no out-of-pocket cost to get into this policy. A bank's gonna loan you, you know, six hundred thousand dollars a year, and you're not gonna have to you're not gonna have to pay anything out of pocket. All you have to do is post some collateral, and the year one collateral is fifty-eight thousand dollars. Okay, so this is a huge red flag as it relates to premium finance uh, because. If your collateral is, you know, less than, gosh, I don't even want to put a number on it, but this collateral here is less than 10% of the year one premium, and there's no additional out-of-pocket cost. That's a ton of leverage to be putting into this policy. And what it means is there's literally no wiggle room in this particular design. So $58,000 out of pocket year one to post as collateral. There's no payments required out of pocket above the collateral posting. We're borrowing $600,000 a year from the bank. Now here's the issue with these types of policies. Number one, your collateral balloons. So you can see that your collateral balloons up to a million dollars in year seven. And this is at these you know, 5.19% assumed rates. So your collateral balloons in year seven don't like that. I think that's an inefficient premium finance design where your collateral actually increases. Uh, it starts off with next to no commitment. You got no skin in the game here relative to most premium finance policies. Your collateral balloons in year seven to a million dollars under perfect conditions. And then the biggest thing here with this particular bank sheet, and we'll get to some other uh, issues here in a second, but the biggest thing is 
there's no loan payoff here. Let me say that again. There's no loan payoff happening inside this design. So this $709,000, $750,000 income that's being projected, you'll notice that the actual loan balance never goes away. Total cumulative loan balance here is column 11. This loan from the bank is never paid back to the point where, you know, at 80 years old, you've got a $70 million loan balance at the bank, fully collateralized by this policy. And you're essentially advancing the maximum amount that you can advance every single year while floating this loan. Well, that's extremely risky because you have no idea what interest rates are gonna do in the future. And in this design, to show this type of income, to show floating this loan forever, it looks incredible. You're paying no money out of pocket. Yes, you have to post a high watermark of a million dollars, but you're gonna generate $700,000 a year in tax-free income forever. But unfortunately, what you don't see is just how fragile this policy is. So I wanna show you how fragile this policy is just by like keying in here on year 30, okay? So we're gonna key in on the values here in year 30. And I'll read them out to you just because I know that um, there's a lot of numbers here on the screen. So our total loan balance in year 30 is $35,629,000, 795. So $35.6 million is our total loan balance in year 30 there. Our policy value is 35,634,000. So we have a surplus policy value over the total loan balance of just under five grand. Okay, that's a problem. And let me show you why that's a problem. I took a screenshot of the actual policy that's backing this design, and I wanna show you what year 30 actually looks like. So here it is. In year 30, the credit that is received on the policy, the interest credited, is $2.9 million. $2.9 million. The fees are gonna be your cost of insurance and your asset-based charges. Your fees are 208 and 165, total of $373,000. $373,000 in fees. But this $2.9 million credit assumes a 7.8% return. So this policy is assuming 7.8% in every single year, which you and I both know that's not going to happen. It's impossible that you get 7.88 on the nose every single year, you're gonna have zeros. Well, what if you have a 0% in year 30? What would that look like? Unfortunately, it blows this whole thing up. Let me show you. So your cash value in year 30 uh, would be pretty simple to calculate. Uh, we would simply just look at our year 29 cash value and we would subtract out the $373,000 in fees and not apply a credit. That's all that we would have to do. So $370,000 in fees and we've got a $2.9 million credit. Let's go back to our table here. So we've got in year 29, our cash value is $33 million. So $33 million. 88, 33,088, 512, minus $373,000. That's 32,715,000. 32,715,000. Well, our loan balance in the next year is $35 million. $35 million. Our policy value is only 32,7. So the difference between those two is gonna be your collateral requirement in that year, $2.9 million. Your collateral requirement in year 30, if you decide to take out $700,000 in year 30, is going to all of a sudden be $2.9 million with one zero percent return in the whole life of this policy. And that's why I say, man, this design, it's not to say that it's wrong, it's right, if the loan rates are 5.5% in every single year, and if your policy grows at 7.88% every single year with no zeros, which we both know that's not gonna happen. Neither of those things are going to happen. 
And so I just, man, the only reason I'm talking about this is because this is the type of premium finance design that gets people into trouble. You get into it thinking it's going to require nothing out of you. You get into it with next to no skin in the game, $58,000 in collateral that you have to post. And yet you're thinking, man, I'm doing this because I'm going to get a $700,000 tax-free annual payoff starting in 20 years, not realizing that one zero percent return results in you having to post 2.9 million, let's just say the net, let's assume that you don't take the $700,000 income in year 30, $2.2 million in collateral in year 30 with one year that doesn't work the way this bank sheet says it should work. With one year that doesn't go as planned, the client has to post 2.2 million in collateral 30 years down the road. And that's why I say, you know, premium finance can be a great thing, but man, it really has to be done right. So when we look at a premium finance policy, we're going to do a couple things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to stress test the interest rates. We're not going to show just some flat interest rate scenario forever. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to always pay the bank back. We're not going to float this total loan balance for 40 some years. There's way too much risk in doing that. Sure, if the bank is charging you 2%, 30 years down the road, you might decide to float the loan because the cost of that loan is next to nothing. But we're always going to project paying off the loan, paying the bank back. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we forecast some years of 0% policy performance on the actual insurance contract side. Because if you don't do that, you're left with these rosy pictures of having to basically pay no money out of pocket, post next to nothing in collateral, and yet all your problems are solved by this tax-free income. And that's just not realistic. So here's what I'd tell you. If you have seen a premium finance design that looks like this, if you've been pitched free insurance or no risk premium finance, I'm here to tell you that those things don't exist. There's no such thing as free insurance. There's no such thing as riskless financed insurance. It doesn't exist. It's not real. You've been sold a bag of goods, okay? Don't go down that path. You will regret it. Because in every case, for every person that I've talked to that has been pitched free insurance or no risk premium finance, uh, it always ends up costing them more than they could have ever imagined. And it always requires more skin in the game than they would have been willing to do from the beginning. And most of the people that end up pursuing premium finance policies, they realize that it's going to require something of them. You got to have some skin in the game. And, you know, there's some risk involved. And the risk is, you know, what happens if things don't cooperate? Well, your collateral goes up. And so I'm doing this video because, you know, I'm tired of seeing really bad premium finance policy designs. And I'm tired of getting people coming to me you know, after the fact, already in these policies saying, Matt, what do I do? Because the answer is there's not much you can do once you get into it. If there's any type of uh, investment decision that you want to make sure you get right, it's when you add leverage to something like a, an insurance policy. Uh, and when you add leverage to anything, you want to make sure that you get it right. And so I'm here to help you get it right. So if you've been pitched a premium finance policy, if you're exploring this as an option for you, and if you're not sure if it's right for you, if you're not sure if you qualify, if you're not sure if you've seen a good policy design, I'd encourage you to go to our website, leveragewm.com. You can go to contact-us. We'll link it below in the description. You can fill out a short form and we can chat about premium finance, see if it's right for you, see if it's designed the right way. And at the very least, give you peace of mind of what you're looking at. But more often than not, we're going to be able to show you a design that's either one of two things, safer or more efficient. And those two things are huge when it comes to premium finance. So uh, I'll say it one more time. There's no such thing as free insurance. There's no such thing as riskless premium finance policies. If you've been sold that, run and run fast. Uh, don't go down that path. It always requires more of you than what you're prepared to give out. This has been Matt Decker, Leverage Wealth Management. Until next time, take care. Hey, it's Matthew Decker, Leverage Wealth Management. Uh, I just want to give you an opportunity to book a discovery call with us. Uh, we get tons of emails, phone calls, 
uh, voicemails every single week for people asking for policy reviews as well as you know retirement planning scenarios. And so if you're someone who feels like, man, I have one of these index universal life insurance policies, number one, I don't know if it's any good. Or if someone's proposing an index universal life insurance policy to you and you want to get it reviewed, I'd encourage you to book a discovery call with us. It takes maybe 15, 20 minutes. We ask you some questions. We get a feel for you know what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve. And then we'll do a full policy review for you at no cost. Uh, and so you can book a discovery call with us there. And at the same time, if you're one of those people that wants to kind of get on the ball as it relates to retirement planning, and you want to go through an entire holistic retirement plan, get your point A, your point B, and figure out the best, most efficient way to retire when and how you want, you can also book a discovery call for that as well. Although that process is a little bit more time intensive uh, on your side. But I just wanted to offer that up to you only because you know we have limited time and limited availability. But if you're one of those people that's serious about their finances, you're serious about figuring this thing out, then I'd encourage you to book a discovery call and we can't wait to talk to you.